Hey everyone, got something new today. This is a rotary table for a milling machine. In this video, I'm gonna show you what it is. I think I'll discuss some of the features and why I purchased this particular type over the others that are available. After that, I'll detail some of the fixes I had to do to it as part of um, stripping it down and rebuilding it, which was the basis of this video. And then after that, I will show you how to adjust this section here. If you have one yourself of this type, it's not very clear. It's not in the manual. I don't think it's in any other videos, so I'll just go over that a little bit in more detail. Then after that, we'll uh, move on into the usual selection of machining clips and so on, like I always do. So if you want to see any of that, stick around and watch the video. So the first part is obviously, what is it? It's just a spinning table that you can use on your mill. What's it for? You can cut arcs, circles. You can cut bolt holes in a circle. I needed this when I was making a part for my DRO installation series on my mill here. I needed to cut an arc into a piece of aluminium. I did actually have this. I've had this for months, but it's been sitting in my drawer. It was very rough and difficult to use. It was, it's just a mess. This is a very cheap one. And so I used it anyway for that and decided I really need to get stuck into this and fix it up for a new video and so that I can use it next time much more easily. So I did that and I cut this arc in this piece. It worked perfectly. It was great. So when you go looking for these online to purchase, they start off quite small at about three inches. But really, what are you going to clamp onto something that's three inches? especially when you have to allow for the clamps themselves and the workpiece. So your workpiece might end up being an inch. They go up from there to 100 or 125. By the time you get to 6 inches or 150, they actually look like this. Part of that consideration is how big the, um, the bed of your mill is, because you need to clamp it to it tightly. And if it has slots for um, attaching bolts, consider how far apart those slots are and how far apart your... Um, the slots in your bed are. And so when I did that, I ended up with this six inch one. The eight inch size is very, very heavy and very large, has a good size platter, but it's huge, way too big for this thing. And so this is the size that I ended up with for this mill. Once you're looking at tables this size on websites, you'll probably also come across things called indexing heads and uh, dividing heads. And those are dedicated units for clamping something on your mill and then spinning it and set at you know, specific amounts around while you do operations on it as it goes around. Cutting gear teeth is, is the prime example of that. And those are dedicated to that purpose. Well, because a rotary table at its core is a very similar device, you can often buy accessories for these that convert them to be an indexing head. And that's what this one has. And because the sale was right, they were selling it as a pack, I decided to get it. And so what you do is you get their basic rotary table. You get these plates. These give you all the positions for whatever, whatever degrees that you're trying to cut. They mount here. You just take the wheel off and then you attach a, one of these on. And then it also attaches with this handle here, which you use to position. And there's a couple of other accessories that belong to that. And you also get this here adapter plate. This is in order to attach a chuck to the table. There's also a pin for centering it. This is a Morse taper two with a custom grind on there that I did to make it precise. So this mounts here and that centers it very nicely. Otherwise it would be very difficult to center. Then you can fasten the table with, with the T-nuts here. And once you've done that, you get your chuck you put it on and that attaches like that. Now it's not just any old chuck, it's a special one that has screw holes in the front so that it can attach to this plate. Once you've got all that going, you're halfway there to an indexing head. All you need to do is mount it vertically and then there's another piece that belongs to it and that's the tailstock. And the tailstock is just like on your lathe, it's basically a dead center. So if you're cutting features around a rod or something, this will hold the other end tightly. And so the next question is, why buy this one? It doesn't actually have a name. There's nothing in the documentation. It's just a horizontal and vertical rotary table. That's it. There are several different ones and they get very, very heavy as you go up in size. This one here is 13 kilograms just for the table, not with all the other stuff attached. The next size up, the eight inch is 27 kilograms just for the table. And all packaged together, this was 30 kilograms in the post. So you can imagine how heavy a, um, an 8-inch version of this is. 
Now also on offer on the same website was the Vertex. They have the same table, in fact this one looks like a copy of the Vertex. The only visible difference is the, um, this one has four slots in the table and the Vertex has three slots. I had by then read that people want more slots and that the four slot is definitely preferable to a three slot. Once I used it for the DRO project, I sort of realized why, because when you're trying to clamp something and there's no slots where you need them, you really want another slot. And so that was one point in favor of this. And the other was the price. It was a couple of hundred dollars less to purchase this one. And it came as a kit with the entire dividing set, including, most importantly, this adapter plate. The Vertex didn't have the adapter plate, and so I would have to have sourced one or made one. I don't even have a piece of steel like that. And so saving a couple of hundred dollars, I just purchased this one and I thought I'll deal with any issues as I find them, same as I've had to do with all my other devices out of China. So I'll just quickly point out the things that I had to do to this one to make it useful. So the first and most obvious problem was the gadget that locates this adapter plate on the table here. Now this has to be pre very precisely mounted on the table because as you turn it, you can't have your chuck going like that. And so this has to be dead center when you mount it and fasten it. And to do that, they give you this. This is an MT2 taper on this side and it's straight up here. And the idea is you put it in there and you put this on it. So if you do that, and then you go, it's about a third of a millimeter, and that's too much. So I knew I needed to do something about that. And you'll see how I did that in the video. Basically, I went and purchased a, an MT2 JT3 arbor because I'd measured and I just found that the JT3 was larger than that hull, which is 20 millimeters, for quite a bit of its range. And I thought, well, if I can turn that down somehow to exactly that uh, size, I'll be good. It wasn't that easy to do, but it worked out. And so that's the gadget I use for mounting this. It's very tight. And there's no movement at all. Now, the next thing I did was I made some new guides, some very precise guides for these slots here. Now most people don't use these. They just put their rotary table on the mill and then they slide it around until they get it centered. There's usually a place here to put a nut uh, and one on the other side. Well this hasn't got one over here. There's only one on the other side. That's why they're giving you these guides so that you can put it on your table and then lock it. That's all you need is one screw to hold it in place, keep it from sliding around, and those actually lock it. However, they weren't precise enough. And so I knew I needed to make some fresh ones and I did that. That's part of this video. And I made a couple of spare. And in fact, I'm gonna make a couple more, I think. And so with those, I can put the thing on the table, also in the 90 degree position like that, and we're good. I just have to lock it. When it's vertical, you can put a screw both there and there. And that was one of the other fixes I did in this video, is I ground these out, or I milled these out, so that I could put screws down into my slots. They're very difficult to handle these things because they're very heavy, and every corner is gonna damage something if you drop it or knock it. This also gets these things, and so I can take two of them off the back and put them there. And then when I put both of these into the center slot on my table, it's all in alignment. And I replaced a couple of these oilers that were pretty bad. And then apart from that, it was really just all about cleaning it up, lubricating everything, and then adjusting it all once it was back together. And that all worked out real well. So in the next part, I'm gonna show you how to adjust this section here. Now, as part of this job, I of course was able to figure out exactly how all these nuts and bolts and adjustments all fit together and how it should be set up. It's not mentioned in the manual, Pretty sure I haven't seen anything like that on YouTube, so I may as well show it to you here. Now, I'm not pulling apart all of this. I had it apart in the video, you can see that. The main points there are this central shaft here has a basically a locking collar here, and all you can do is screw it down to where it moves, doesn't bind, but also doesn't have any end float. That's what you want to get rid of, is end float. And so I did that there, and it moves nice and freely. Um, in the user guide, I noticed it does have a thrust bearing there, but I had a look online and there's no way I can find one. I just cannot find one in that sort of size. It would be about a 14 inner diameter and about 20 on the outside and as thin as possible. There's two 
uh, set screws on that and as you tighten them each one affects the other so you might get one of them tightened down and you think that's perfect and then you go to the other and tighten that and it makes the whole thing move a little bit and it starts binding so you sort of have to go back and forth and back and forth and just get it right to where once they're both pretty tight it's good now the other thing that's very similar is this plate here so this whole barrel fits into the casting and this plate here is the bearing surface on this side of it and again you don't want any end float on that or as little as possible i can feel now there's a tiny bit there and i suspect that's just because i've had it up and running for a day and i've used it quite a bit and so now it's just settled in and i'm going to just try and adjust that this has four set screws and four screws the four screws just screw into the body and the set screws hold the whole thing off the body and you ba balance them against each other to take up all of the slop in the end float here of this um, shaft best thing to do perhaps is undo the set screws all together then tighten the four screws on until each of them just grabs this um, thing and so this won't move at that point then you can back these each one of these off a tiny bit that'll give you your starting point you can then bring these set screws in so that they start to lift this whole thing and then go back and forth from there so i'm just going to pull that one out to make sure it's um, not affecting this in in that position it's the worm is engaging with the table in that position it's not actually i should do it while it's in that nearly in this position not but not where the worm gear is fully engaged but i'll do it while it's just disengaged about there because that's the position that it's going to be in when it operates Okay, I think we're good there. That was a tiny amount to be bothered with, but uh, I did it because I'm fussy. So now I've got that adjusted so that there's no end play in this here, no float, and it can move freely all the way to the left here where it engages with the worm gear and comes out to the right where it disengages and it just comes to a stop out here where it sort of gets jammed. Now this one here actually locks this. So once you engage, you use this one on top to lock it. That's all that does. So we leave that one unlocked. Be aware that locking it changes the adjustment slightly. And we're going to put this wheel on. Uh, say I wanted it to be around about there. And the wheel shouldn't touch that. Just bring it slightly off that and lock it. And the other one there. Okay, so this is our handle for operating what we've just done. Okay, so what we're going to do now is adjust where this thing sits. You can give it an end point so that you can always get back to that end point, and that's using this screw here. I'm going to leave that where it is now. I'm going to start screwing this in, and you can watch. I'm going to hold my finger against this, and I'll turn this, and this will move. There we go. Go the other way, and it moves the other way. And the limit is there. That's the limit. It's jammed. The gears are jammed all the way together right there. That's too tight. We bring it like this. We turn it too tight. Keep going. Turn it too tight. Keep going. Too tight. Keep going. Go out and in again once in a while just to reset it. So it's spinning now, but I can feel, well, that might be acceptable. That's pretty tight, though, I can tell. So keep spinning around until you've found all the tight spots. That's pretty good. So I'm just going to try that. Let's bring this nut up. And I can feel a limit, which is when it hits that screw, whereas without that in there, it wouldn't have a hard knock, sort of a hard stop there. It would just uh, jam the gears together. I'm going to go all the way around because, of course, the big table gear is that big and this worm gear has to go all the way around it. And there could be a bad spot. That seems pretty good. OK, now this screw here 
you don't do anything with. All you do is you loosen it to move that away, and then that's clear. You can spin the table by hand, and then when you're ready, bring this in, and then tighten that just with your fingers. I may have mentioned this earlier. This screw here, when you tighten it, affects this whole positioning. So now it's locking in that position. We're gonna undo this, and we're gonna do this whole thing again. Lock, there. It's moving, we're gonna go in a bit. Lock that, see if it binds. Yes, it does. Unlock, go in, lock, open. Yep, still does a little bit. That's the adjustment. Really, it's all of those items, all the way down to that locking screw. Okay, so the next thing is, just um, check this again and make sure it's in a position where you want it to be. Main thing is, you don't want it to, uh, you know, these two pieces to grind against each other. Put your crank handle back on and fasten the handle all the way. Like that. I set this up so that I would be able to see the scale here on this wheel. If I flip it up, I can still see it there, but it would be around here. That seemed to me to be a good idea. Now, how much uh, slop have we got after all that adjustment? Let's see. Lock the table, and that's it. You wouldn't really get any less than that without causing it to bind somewhere on its range. All right, so there we go. That's the rotary table and indexing head. Um, if you like what you see, give me a like, subscribe, follow, comment on the video, let me know how I'm doing. And otherwise, stick around and watch all the machining clips. I'll put those in now. Okay, we'll see you later. Got a bag of goodies. So there's the adapter plate, a great big chuck. So there's the plate thingy, some sort of backing thing that it's mounted on with what, four screws. And then there's the bearing thingy that it sits on, or at least a central hub with four screws. And that sits in the base unit here. And on the back of that, in fact, let me just check that again. enough to be irritating, isn't it? What I'm trying to do is either make this bigger and then turn it down to exactly the size of this, because it's not quite tight enough. That's the included arbor. Or I take this arbor, and this is tapered on both ends, but the taper is larger than the hole, so I could, again, turn that down to the hole size, and then trim a bit off the top, and that would work as well. It would only grip it at the top end here, but that's all right. About that much, which would be enough to center it.
So what we're seeing here is some nice clean holes, slots. We can just go back and forth and see how much. That's it, perfect. Hot, but as always, very nice. So far, so good. I can tell there's a bit of a zero point zero zero one. That's why I wanted that one micron resolution, just so I could see where that final digit was, if it was close to the next value or closer to the previous value of the hundreds. Ten point seven three. Oh well, that's correct.
I didn't have the stupid camera on. So what I just did was I, oh, after sawing that off, I put it in here and I just faced it and then I filed it on the edge to make it nice. And I was just gonna check it out. So that would be going in there. This would be going here. And what I want is no movement. And there is no movement. I'm gonna wash all the pieces next, clean them all up, and then dry them and put them all together. So instead of 1997, we have 2004. That's basically what I was after, 2005.
Oof. There. Ta-da, there we go. So that one, obviously. And this one, that's the nice new one. Oh, and it's pushed in. I'll have to do something about that one. Yeah, I think for that, my best option would be to rip that out and then measure up a little tube, a little piece of tubing to put in there first and then push that down after it. That's it. Well, that's come out. So I'm just gonna hold it in tight and then score around the edge. And then I guess I'll chop off that much. So we good, that's on, that's locked. Pieces in, that's tight. That's not on motor, that's locked. Here we go, speed down. First, let's see if that'll go in, yes it will. That about there. Yeah, that's what we want. That's all right, let's check it. Yeah, it's still not very tight, but Good. Very nice. That's what I wanted. <laughs>